unfortunately, we're no longer in a world where conservation is best achieved by just leaving ecosystems alone. Doing the research to understand what potential we have to intervene and how effective that could be and what are the risks in doing so is, is absolutely essential. Otherwise, these ecosystems are just going to disappear in a, in a very short time frame uh, under our noses. Welcome to Disrupted. I'm David Pollard. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is in a battle for survival. Since 2016, amid record temperatures, it suffered five summers of mass coral bleaching, putting large sections at greater risk of death. A team at Southern Cross University, though, is working to give the reef a fighting chance. It's using new technology to brighten clouds in order to shade and thus cool the reef and reduce solar radiation. Dan Harrison of the university's Reefs and Oceans Research Cluster is leading this work. Dan, for how urgent is this situation and what do you hope to achieve with cloud brightening? We're hoping over the next 10 years or so to develop cloud brightening technology to a point where it, where it could start to be rolled out first over limited areas of the reef and eventually potentially over the whole reef to help protect it as the climate change progresses further and further. Mass bleaching events that we're seeing on the Great Barrier Reef, they're increasing in frequency and in their severity. This most recent event, nearly the entire Great Barrier Reef has been bleached to some extent. To make pre-existing clouds bigger and denser, seawater is sprayed from turbines into the surrounding atmosphere so that they reflect sunlight back into space at the peak of the Australian summer. We need to atomise seawater to sub-micron droplets which evaporate and the remaining salt crystal, it's, it's only about 30 or 40 nanometres across, the size of a virus. And we can produce a thousand trillion of these per second from just 30 millilitres of seawater. An Australian study this year suggests over the last decade, water temperatures in and around the Barrier Reef are at the highest in 400 years. These pictures from Thailand of bleached stony coral on the left and healthy staghorn coral on the right give some idea of the damage caused by those temperatures. It's quite devastating when huge swaths of coral are, are first fluorescing in these these colours that actually look quite pretty, but it's, it's the corals are, are fighting for survival at that point, and, and that's the beginning of the, the bleaching process when they're under stress. Then they, of course, lose their symbiotic algae, they turn white, and they essentially starve to death. But cloud brightening is not a permanent solution, he says. If we continue to have business as usual and, and our emissions keep growing and climate change keeps worsening, then it really can only help buy us a few decades before the benefit is, is overcome by worsening climate change. So it's, it really needs to go hand in hand with emissions reductions. Transecting the plume now. With drones and small aircraft, the team then samples the seawater plume and measures the effects on the clouds. After four trials and with another due in 2025, the next challenge is to measure the resulting benefits to the reef itself. Some of the modelling that looks out into the future over the next 50 years or so shows that a sea surface temperature reduction or avoided warming really of about 0.3 degrees or so is enough to start making a significant difference to the ecosystem. We think we might be able to get up to maybe around double that but really we still need to find a, a massive increase in, in output and improvement in technology before this idea could be scalable. Australia's Barrier Reef, an area the size of Italy, supports not only sea life, but a tourism economy worth around four billion US dollars a year. After an initial five years, this project and a myriad of others supported by the government are looking to renew their program. On a world scale, they're not alone, with similar projects scattered across the globe seeking to deal with the over 50 mass coral bleaching events seen since early 2023. We're no longer in a world where conservation is best achieved by just leaving ecosystems alone. It's a, a risk versus risk situation now. What are the risks of, of intervening versus what are the risks of sitting back and, and letting climate change wreak havoc on some of these ecosystems?